Hunter Biden wants probe done. Student loan payments will resume. And the question is, where the heck is all the money? This is crazy, y'all. We all knew that this time would come, although not many of us thought about how to handle it once we got here. So student loan payments are getting very close to restarting and the C-19 vaccines will now no longer be paid for by the government. For those who are still getting these things, are you ready to pay for both of these things soon? Not many Americans are thrilled about a possible Trump-Biden rematch going into 2024 with some that are saying that they're feeling really sad about it all. What about you guys? You sad? A little teary-eyed? Are you looking forward to them running against each other again? Or is it time for some new blood to be included in this conversation? Hunter Biden, who is not in any political conversation if we're talking about government office, has just ordered his lawyer to demand an ethics probe on Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene. As it seems, the first son is not happy with the many attacks that Greene has allegedly made against him. His team is also fuming about the circulation of banking records linked to their family that shows some very suspicious suspicious activity, something that his legal team says is illegal. So wait, having the records published on websites can be deemed illegal, but what's reflecting in the bank records aren't? Hmm, you guys got any thoughts on that? And have you wondered what could be done with the leftover pandemic funds that are predicted to be hundreds of billions of dollars? We're going to try to figure that one out later in this video. Now, obviously, previously, they have been used for stimulus checks, stimulus packages, SNAP and EBT benefits, child tax credits, PPP loans, EIDL, and an assortment of other forms of government assistance, but let's see what they may actually be using the remaining funds for. Now, before I continue, please do me a huge favor, drop a like for the video and share this video with everyone that you know. It's a huge boost to the algorithm and it certainly helps out with the growth of the channel. Now, if you're new here and in need of your daily dose of the truth when it comes to social security, the state of our economy, the housing market, real estate, global happenings, and everything going on in Washington, DC that affects our lives, our families, and our bank account, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And for the best way to invest in gold, or silver, check out the links in the description down below of this video. $1,333. Probably thinking to yourself, what the heck is that number on? Well, that's the possible check that you and I could get if the federal government finally made use of the supposed $400 billion that's still left over from the pandemic relief funds. The problem is, will they ever actually use this money? And will this money be used for us? Or are they waiting on nothing at this point? House Republicans have already called out that these funds should be recalled. But the big problem here here is that the numbers aren't making that much sense. It's now being estimated that the unspent pandemic emergency money is now just around 50 to 70 billion dollars, which is a far cry from the estimate of a non-profit group that has tirelessly tracked these funds. There's two possibilities here. So one, they haven't audited it to a point where it's, you know, updated to recent figures. And two, maybe some money's, a lot of money is missing. So which of the two do you think is more probable here? Now, in terms of possible, do you think it's possible that some someone other than former President Donald Trump and President Joe Biden will face off in 2024. So a new poll shows that many Americans are not looking forward to a rematch and that 38% of us are already exhausted about the idea. 29% feel fear while 23% are expressing sadness and fear. There seems to be a lot of fear going around if these two go head to head again. And you got to wonder, like, what are we so scared about? I mean, it can't be the pandemic. President Biden has already declared that's over. Could it be our expenses that continue to rise day by day? What do you guys think. Now, if we're talking about expenses though, students are still not seeing their loans forgiven and the time to restart their payments is getting very close. And it's not just the students that are saying that they lack the financial capability to handle these payments. The Department of Education is basically saying the exact same thing to Congress. A spokesperson for the department said that, quote, as the department has repeatedly made clear, restarting repayments requires significant resources to avoid unnecessary harm to borrowers, such as cuts to servicing, end quote. So they're basically saying that cuts have been made to customer service funding, and this in turn will affect many borrowers across the nation. They're already saying that the wait time on phone calls are expected to take even longer now. The same goes for processing requests. Are you ready to spend hours on the phone soon? I know I'm not. Oh wait, I ain't got no student loans. Never mind. Now speaking of things that cost money, let's jump on over to the C-19 vaccines and how some people may need to pay for their next shot. I know, I know, some people are still getting the shots, so I just want to speak to those people right now. Now, with the public health emergency being nothing more than just a memory at this point, these jabs may now cost around four times what was previously expected, and this should be worrying for individuals who don't have insurance. The White House has stepped in to help and invested more than a billion dollars to purchase more shots to help uninsured Americans. But who knows how long that those are going to last? Who knows how long that those will be viable before they're expired? So what are your thoughts on having to pay for these vaccines? Do you guys believe that it's ethical for pharma companies like Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, Moderna to sell us supposed life 
life-saving drugs in a once-in-a-lifetime pandemic? Now, on that note, a lawyer for Hunter Biden is calling the Office of Congressional Ethics to review Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene and her apparent unhinged rhetoric, possible violations of House ethics rules, and official conduct standards following a number of statements and accusations made against the first son. Now, in a letter, Hunter's lawyer, Abe David Lowell, he said this, quote, Representative Greene's unethical conduct arises from her continuous verbal attacks, defamatory statements, publication of personal photos and data, and promotion of conspiracy theories about and against Robert Hunter Biden. None of these could possibly be deemed to be part of any legitimate legislature activity, as is clear from both the content of her statements and her actions and the forms she's used to spew her often unhinged rhetoric, end quote. Man, that dude went off on her. Now, there's also the Treasury Department to investigate the circulation of federal banking records linked to Hunter Biden on a website that reported some of the first son's suspicious activity reports or SARS. Now, just to make this clear, SARS, S-A-R-S, usually pop up when financial institutions like banks see transactions that could indicate illegal activity, although disclosing this information without the proper authorization may be grounds for prosecution. They're pinning the blame on a former Trump aide, Garrett Ziegler, and in a letter, Hunter's legal team said, quote, Ziegler has used Mr. Biden's SARS and other financial records to craft a false narrative that Mr. Biden is associated with a human trafficking ring. In his persistent and continued broadcasts of this fictitious tale, Ziegler has called upon House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer to disseminate Mr. Biden private information to a wider audience, end quote. I mean, it's like they're saying that these documents are real and that, yes, there may have been some questionable transactions made under Hunter Biden's account. But what do you guys think? His legal team says that it's all false and it's made up. You guys be the judge. Let me know what you guys think on that. And as we're already talking about bank accounts, what I find really suspicious is the amount that continues to flow out of mine. I don't know about you guys, but these expenses are creeping up on them. It's like a usual visit to Target or Walmart is now worth so much more compared to just a few years ago. I mean, I'm shelling out a lot more dollars and putting a whole lot less in my grocery bags and shopping cart. But I'm handling it fairly well, you know, especially since I worked hard to get my cash flow going. Got a few different streams of passive income, some residual income, a couple of online businesses, but still, I am still feeling the pain. I, I suppose it could be worse though. Now, if you are interested in learning to generate multiple streams of income through small businesses, home-based businesses, side hustles, creating some forms of passive income, compounding your money, there's also the limitless potential of investing in the real estate market, the stock market, even the S&P 500, NASDAQ, you name it, or even in precious metals like gold or silver. Now, of course, for the best way to invest in gold or silver, check out the links in the description down below this video. But I'd love to hear from you guys. If you want to learn more about that, definitely hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know if you would like to learn how to create passive income, multiple streams of income, build online businesses, home-based businesses, maybe start your own LLC, hire your kids as workers, maybe even discuss what types of tax write-offs can be applicable for your business. But anyway, hit me up in the comments down below. Before I go, don't forget to drop a thumbs up for the video. Also subscribe to the channel and do your boy a favor and share this video with everyone you care about. Y'all be safe. Please be kind to one another and I'll see you on the next one.